We have thought that acknowledgement of negativity was somehow an act of unfaith, as though the very speech about it conceded too much about God's loss of control. Brueggemann goes on to point out the use of these psalms of disorientation is an act of bold faith, of transformed faith. It is an act that all the questions in the world about difficult experiences are proper discourse with God. There is nothing out of bounds, nothing precluded, nothing inappropriate. Everything belongs in this conversation of the heart. To withhold parts of life from this conversation is in fact to withhold part of life from the sovereignty of God. We cannot refuse to live the questions just because we do not have all the answers. And Dan Clendenning writes an essay entitled Coming Closer to Myself, Reflections on Turning 50. I won't ask you to raise your hand if you are on the verge of turning 50. But this one is for you and for me and for all of us. Dan says, so if you live anything like a normal life, sorrow and heartache visit you sooner or later. By the time you reach 50, whether through your parents, your spouse, children, friends, boss, job, the stock market, the random roll of the genetic dice, plain old bad luck, if a Christian can use the word luck, or from what the poet Wendell Berry once called our irremedial ignorance. So brutal realism, modesty, and the embrace of the fleeting mystery of life befit a person turning 50. I resonate with the many people who quote the lines of the German poet Rilke about living the questions. Some people at my age resist the analysis of the psalmist as too gloomy and overly pessimistic and instead throttle full speed ahead as if nothing had changed. However, if they do that, my banal ordinary life is speeding toward completion. And that, with what the psalmist describes, a labor, sorrow, and a moan. The psalmist points me to confidence and joy and gratitude. In a culture of victimization, it takes audacity to celebrate gratitude for life itself with all of its problems. In a society that winks at greed and encourages entitlement, contentment with your station in life supposes a radical experience of grace. In a world of staggering pain and inequality, there is still cause to do what Anne Lamott describes as enjoy each little sandwich. So says Dan Clendenning. And finally, to quote the earlier German, German poet, Rainer Maria Rilke, I would beg to you, dear sir, as well as I can, to have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and to try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far into the future, you will gradually, without even, even noticing it, live your way into the answer. 
It is a great day to be alive. I am so blessed to share this day with you. Thanks be to God. Amen.